that the ECB President Mario Draghi's comments uh, is probably going to trump any uh, positivity out of, of that. Do you think that will be the case for our markets today? It really tells you a lot about the market, Liz, when we see what appears to be coordinated central bank action by the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, as well as the People's Bank of China overnight. And yet we see risk assets sell off. We saw commodities lower with copper prices down by about 1.4%, oil prices down by about 1.1% and also gold prices down by 1%. So we've seen markets selling off off the back of that and it looks like the market concentrating more on uh, why these moves were needed and that is more global uh, growth weakness in particular in China as well as in Europe. In Europe, uh, we did see the European Central Bank cutting by 25 basis points. Interest rates over there, official interest rates are now at a record low of 0.75%. However, Mario Draghi's press conference afterwards really did spook the markets. It seems as though he emphasised the risks um, and the weakness in the Eurozone uh, economy, but he didn't really step up to the plate and offer any solutions. And the market was looking for, I guess, uh, alternative uh, solutions such as bond buying, but he, there was no mention of that and we did see the market selling off quite harshly after his press conference. Over in England we saw the Bank of England uh, raising its quantitative easing program by 50 billion pounds taking that total now to 375 billion pounds and of course China cutting interest rates as well. Altogether, the reaction has been negative. I guess uh, just having a look a little bit more closely at Europe and some of the action, we also saw some Spanish bond auctions happening overnight. We saw three-year auctions, a, a four-year auction as well as a 10-year auction. And if we just have a look at that 10-year yield on that auction, it came in at 6.4%. That's about 40 basis points higher than a month ago. So yield's still elevated. And of course, after Mario Draghi's speech, we did see Spanish market bond yields spike back up to 6.9%. So that remains a concern. But we did see better news coming out of the US. We did see those job numbers being in the spotlight ahead of the non-farm payroll numbers and both the initial jobless claims as well as the ADP private job survey beating on the upside. If we have a look at the ADP private job survey, it came in at 176,000 jobs in the private sector. The market was expecting to see a number around 100,000 and initial jobless claims also coming down last week to 374,000. So that bodes well ahead of the non-farm payroll numbers tonight but all up it does look like it's going to be weakness in the Aussie share market this morning although we did see BHP and Rio shares rising in London we saw a fall in uh, New York mm. and of course with the commodity price weakness we're likely to see some of that weakness in the miners. We've seen UBS coming out this morning and cutting its full year target on the ASX 200 from 4,700 to 4,500. It does look like in their core portfolio they're overweight uh, the miners as well as some of the selective mining services companies said neutral the banks while they're underweight uh, the REITs. And I guess that's reflective of just the environment on the Aussie share market uh, uh, this week. I'm seeing extremely light volumes because of the school holidays, but all up, it does look like we are going to finish the week on a weak note. Julia, do you think, though, there's the possibility that because there has been quite a bit of talk about the possibility of uh, China's central bank taking action soon, the fact that it did, do you think perhaps that that has been priced into the markets and that we might actually see some strength in, in the resources and energy space today? We didn't see that reflected in commodity prices overnight uh, and it does look like instead of focusing on the positives that may be coming out uh, that may flow through from an interest rate cut in China, the market more focusing in on the potential economic numbers that are due to come out of China over the next few weeks and it does look like those numbers may be weaker than what the market has been anticipating so it does look like that's going to be priced into the market today. So the market really just focusing in on the potential weakness in numbers rather than the positive nature of rate cuts and we saw that um, in the move by the European Central Bank which was largely priced in by markets but uh, surprisingly uh, not much of a move in terms of that uh, that move by China which came as a surprise overnight. Um, and just finally Julia one of the companies likely to be in focus today is fund manager Ostock Securities. It's in a trading halt pending the announcement uh, possibly about the sale of its property funds management business. What will this mean for shareholders in Ostock? Well, stock the company is a very different company from what it started off the year as and that's because it sold its securities business to InterSwiss back in March. So it means that it's no longer a broker and the remaining businesses are its $555 million property portfolio as well as life insurance arm. Now this is a stock that is under a takeover offer from Mariner at 11 cents and considering that the AFR has a report that it's looking at a joint venture in that uh, funds management business with uh, 
uh, with another company. Uh, I guess that, that bid under uh, Mariner remains under a cloud now. In fact, Mariner coming out to say that, uh, th th that it may actually impact on their intention to make a full takeover bid uh, for the shares. So it does look like a bit of drama in Ausstock shares. They have been predicting a full year loss of between 15 to 16 million dollars on the uh, back of restructuring as well as some of the trading losses. But uh, Ausstock in a trading halt. We're still waiting for an announcement. It does look like it's going to be around a deal uh, to do with their funds management uh, business, their property funds management business and no doubt that Mariner are not too happy about that move.